Oh howdy all, grab yourselves a beer, it is time for some talk about Path of Exile. Today I wanted to talk about the Double Corruption Altar. This is the Corruption Altar that comes up, up, uh, comes up rarely in Elvis Temples. When you beat an Elvis Incursion, you'll have a chance of upgrading a Corruption Chamber in there sometimes, and when you get it to Tier 3 and you actually go to the Temple of Atsawatl, you will be able to use a very special Corruption Device. This corruption device has some pretty tricky mechanics, and there's a lot of questions. It's one of the most commonly asked questions that I see on the Path of Exile subreddit, is what items should I put into Elva's corruption device? Before I can answer that, I want to talk about the mechanics of the corruption device, and that will, that will inform the answers as to what you might want to put in there. So, although at the moment you will see, of course, on the screen, uh, I'm showing off Path of the, uh, I'm showing off Skin of the Loyal, which is the default answer that I always give to this. Uh, Skin of the Loyal is a very powerful, unique item that I'll go into why I think it's the default choice if you are not particularly swimming in currency. However, it's not the only good choice. There's plenty of good choices, so we'll get to all of them. So the mechanics of the corruption device, uh, it picks one result at random from the following. Firstly, this is a negative result. It bricks the item into a corrupted Shaper or Elder Rare. Elder rare. It maintains the item level of the item that you put in there. Uh, it scrambles the sockets. It randomizes the mods. And unlike when a Valor bricks an item, it does not have a guarantee of giving you six mods. Uh, so it'll be four, five, or six mods. And it will generally be a very negative result unless it happens on an item level 86 Stygian vi uh, vice. So the belts, the uh, Stygian vice belts, which can sometimes end up um, bricking into something that is considerably better than what you put in there because you can't otherwise get a shape or an elder Stygian vice in normal gameplay anymore. And this is a way in which you might wind up with an extraordinarily good one if you are very, 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 very lucky. However, in general, uh, bricking an item this way is a poor result. The second possibility is that the altar outright destroys the item. Uh, there will be nothing left, there will be no trace, there will be nothing to sell to a vendor, no scroll fragment. Uh, you will just see an unsatisfying poof and the item disappears. The third option, and I'm going to turn this socket bleaching because uh, it's something that will be discussed a little bit later on, uh, it changes all the sockets to white. When you use a Valor Bond on an item, it has a chance of turning one, two, three, or even more sockets white, uh, but it is very rare to get a large number of sockets turned to white. And some people estimated, I have no, I, I can't verify this, but some people estimate that it is... 90% to give you one white socket, 9% to give you two, 0.9% to give you three, 0.09% to give you four, and so on. However, uh, with the socket bleach effect of Elvis Temple, uh, it simply turns all of them to white. This is, this is usually not actually all that good a result. Normally you're hoping for better, but there is one exception where it is a very good result. The fourth possibility is that it removes one implicit modifier from the item and applies two VAL implicits. If the item has multiple implicit modifiers on it, uh, which is generally only possible with synthesized items which you can't create in the current state of the game, then the removed item will be chosen, or the removed implicit will be chosen at random. It will then apply two VAL implicits which are limited by the item's item level. And the list of all of the possible corrupted implicits is available on the Path of Exile wiki. Uh, this list here, which you can get by just searching list of item corrupted implicit modifiers in Google, and it will show this up, uh, will then list all of the different item levels, which will be in the first column, uh, label, which is a description of what the mod does, and then the base types. Um, unfortunately, the layout puts these in a uh, as a graphic, which is not immediately obvious. So it's not the most user-friendly system imaginable, uh, because you do need to determine what the actual item is. And say, for instance, this one here, which I know is two-handed mace because I've looked it up, but I wasn't sure that this was a two-handed mace until I mouse-overed it. 
Uh, so it's not an absolutely perfect system, but um, it will demonstrate it. This is generally what you're wanting the temple altar to do. The last possibility, and this only applies to sacrificial garbs, which are the hybrid uh, strength, intelligence, and dexterity armor base that drops v uh, occasionally from Atsuri, uh, it will replace the item entirely with the Shadow Stitch Unique. Now, using Elva's Corruption Altar, generally, whenever you use this, you will incur a loss. However, it can be used profitably, both at low and high budget. However, I just want to warn people that this is a very variance-dominated uh, result. This is a lottery ticket, not an investment. If you're wanting to make currency and be certain you're going to make currency, your best bet is to sell the uh, is to sell the use of the corruption altar to someone else. Uh, that person does need to trust you, and then they will trade you an item, uh, and then you will apply the Temple of Atsuadal to it and then provide them back the result uh, in exchange for a fee. However, there's a lot of trust that's involved in that because the item could just be completely destroyed. Generally speaking, you will, if you're going to sell your temple corruption altars, it will need to be because you are streaming. And so you will need to stream the results, live stream the results, so that the person can say, okay, this person did legitimately put my item on the corruption altar and it was destroyed. I accept that because that's what they, uh, that is what happened, and I will wear the loss. But that is the secure way to make a profit out of Elva, and you can generally sell the corruption altar use for somewhere between uh, one third and one one half of an exalted orb in a mature league. Uh, but you can potentially get more than that by using it yourself. Now, just a quick note that changing sockets in a corrupted item is finishly expensive, but it can be done. Quality, however, cannot be fixed. If the item has any that you're going to corrupt has any sensitivity to quality, you're going to want to get it to 20% quality if you're on a low budget, or 28% on a high budget before you stick it into Alva's altar. Next up, corrupted items cannot be divined, so you will only want to feed items to the altar if one of two things are correct. Either the item is already pretty, is either very well defined already, or secondly, you have run a cost benefit analysis and decided that you are not willing to spend enough divine orbs in order to make it extraordinarily good. So, run the numbers on that. I will give some reference as to how well defined an item should be when I'm going through everything. Next up are low budget guidelines. If an item you want to put in items that are cheap to link, that are cheap to acquire, but you do not want to compromise on one fact. The item needs to be best in slot for someone. You don't want to be sticking items into the corruption altar if they're just all-purpose good items. So an example of an all-purpose good item is a six-link belly of the beast. This is a very strong item and it's something that someone might consider putting into the Corruption Altar. I would want to argue you don't want to do that, because for pretty much every build, Belly of the Beast is a powerful stepping stone unique, but it is not best in slot. If you apply two Vile Corruptions to it, it is still not going to be best in slot. If your character needs to focus on defensiveness, uh, they would be better off with a double corrupted Calm's Heart or a double corrupted Law Weave. If they need to get um, resist, they'd be better off with a with a whole lot of other possibilities. For that reason, that puts a hard cap on the value of a six-linked belly of the beast that's been double corrupted. You want to be very conscious that the item that you're putting in the altar is go has the potential to be best in slot for at least one popular build that's going around. Next up, I want to warn you: this is often wasted on tabula rasa. Do not waste your Corruption Altars on Tabula Rasa. The Bleach effect, which is usually good, is completely wasted on this item. And the payout for excellent hits is, is also somewhat wasted. If you get an extraordinary result on a Tabula Rasa, let's say that you get... Um, well, let's bring up the list of item Corrupted Modifiers is open. So why don't we just bring up the list of what's available on a Body Armor. So this is Body Armor here. If you get an extraordinary result, like plus two to socketed duration gems and plus two to AOE gems, so you've got plus four 
to the uh, plus four to AOE and duration socketed gems, which is absolutely extraordinary for a fairly popular for a couple of fairly popular builds. If you get that on a tabula rasa, it is going to be far, 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 far inferior to if you'd got it on a better armor like Skin of the Loyal. So for that reason, I'm going to suggest you never use this on tabula, and that if you were considering using it on tabula, you use it on Skin of the Loyal instead. Also just want to quickly define a term, uh, Divine Perfect. This to a lot of people will be obvious, but what it means is that the explicit roles on your item ha would not cannot possibly be improved by the use of a miraculously lucky divine orb. So, for example, uh, if you were to take an item like Sedema's Touch, a divine perfect Sedema's Touch is one that has 10% increased quantity on items found, because that is the only role that can be improved with a divine orb. Uh, Venter's Gamble, which you're never going to, f uh, to find a divine perfect version of this, it probably doesn't exist, uh, would be one with 60 life, plus 10% increased item quantity, plus 40% increased item rarity, plus 50% fire res, 50% cold res, and 50% lightning resist. Uh, as I say, that, that's probably never going to exist, but um, let's just leave that one aside. That's, that's what the term means. Uh, Divine Perfect will come up a bit while I'm discussing the various options. So first up, Skin of the Loyal. Uh, just to note that this is not Skin of the Lords. You can upgrade this item uh, via using a Blessing of Chaola on it, which I do not recommend doing, uh, and then it will transform into a different item called Skin of the Loyal. The Skin of the Loyal has its uses, but it's not what we're looking for here. Sorry, Skin of the Lords, I mean, has its uses, but it's not what we're looking for here. Uh, so the reason you would consider using Skin of the Loyal, uh, this is an excellent choice for the Corruption Altar. Firstly, the Socket Bleach, which is normally just a, oh, I don't really care what happens with this item. Like, that's, a, that's the Consolation Prize. Uh, on Skin of the Loyal, it's actually really good. When you socket bleach a skin of the loyal, you'll wind up with a with what is essentially a plus one tabula rasa, so plus one to level of socketed gems, that also has this useful mod, 100% increased global defenses. Now, what global defenses are, this is your armor, this is your evasion, and this is your energy shield, and it will generally provide about as much of armor, evasion, and energy shield as your helmet does, assuming that your helmet, your boots, your gloves, and your shield are approximately equal quality overall. So when I'm talking about quality there, I mean that they're of, of roughly equal strength. Obviously, your helmet, will pr your helmet and shield will provide more than the other pieces, but... Um, but generally speaking, it's not as good as a normal set of armor, but it will be as good as, an, as a helmet in most situations. Generally, it's best with Skin of the Loyal to pay extra for colors that are either perfect for a meta skill or that are one, one socket off, one support gem off being perfect for a meta skill. So for example, uh, let's take Cyclone. Cyclone is a green skill and it, oh, a green gem, and generally speaking, the most popular colors in the 3.7 uh, Legion expansion are Cyclone, Brutality, Fortify, Pulverize, Impale, and Infuse Channeling for triple red, double green, single blue. However, you can make do with one color off this. Any of the gems that is not, uh, sorry, any of the support gems that is not Impale support can be swapped for another for another gem of a different color. So, for instance, you might change inf re might remove inf infused channeling and replace it with melee physical damage. It's also best to pay extra for colors that relate to spells or for the oddball case of elemental hit. Spells still, even in 3.7, scale more with gem levels than ranged or melee skills. So, I know I was talking about cyclone before, but I'm using Cyclone as an example there. Cyclone doesn't scale all that much with gem level, and so it doesn't. It, it's actually not the best choice to use here. What you want is to look up popular spell skills. Uh, so at the moment, some popular examples of spell skills are Val Ice Nova is popular, Elemental Hit, which 
isn't a spell skill, but scales like a spell skill. Uh, Elemental Hit is popular, and there's a few others. Um, Contagion, Essence Drain, and the like. Uh, you want to look up the, the sort of sockets that people tend to use on those, and consider buying, paying a little bit extra for a skin of the loyal that has colours that are perfectly suited for those skills. Note that the sockets cannot be modified. However, there is an explicit exception, exception on this item for the bleach effect of the altar. The altar does work. Uh, if you put a skin of the loyal into the corruption altar and roll socket bleaching, it will bleach the sockets. In terms of other preparation, don't quality the item. Uh, if you can source an item with item level 20 to 44, do so. But this is pretty rare. Skin of the Loyal normally drops f with item level 85 from a rare monster in a Chayula's pure breach stone at the moment. The reason that you would want to consider an item level 20 to 44 version, if you can get one, is because when we have a look at the various uh, corrupted implicit modifiers that are possible, we have a whole bunch of the very best ones come in at item level 20. But then at 45, there's a bunch of... Then these aren't terrible mods, but they're not what you're wanting. Reduce chaos damage, reduce cold damage, reduce fire damage, reduce lightning damage taken. Yeah, I'll take those if they're coming free, but there's a real opportunity cost. The possibility of rolling these dilutes the potential of rolling these really good mods. The purpose of Skin of the Loyal with the Double Corruption is that you want to get two of these plus two gems that stack together. And it's harder to get that when you've got these item level 45 mods in the pool, and also when you've got this item level 80 mod in the pool, or even though that's normally one of the best corruptions that's available on a, uh, on a chest armor. So your potential, uh, the, the low item level versions also come from turning in the Dreamer Divination card for a random Chayula item, or the Breach Divination card, which is less often available, for a Breach item, uh, random Breach item. So these two Divination cards, so the Breach will less often give you what you want, but they can give you Skin of the Loyal moderately often, and they're not that expensive. If you turn them in on a character that is in the level 20 to 45, or, sorry, 20 to 44 range, you have a reasonable chance of getting a skin of the loyal, especially if you're turning in the dreamer. So the potential hits here for this item, uh, you could hit a six white bleach, which is solid. You could hit any one plus to gem levels mod that synergizes with the socket colors, or you could hit plus 40 to 50% increased damage. Now, if you get a hit like this, you're going to be able to sell it for 1 to 8 Exalted Orbs in most leagues. Uh, generally speaking, a bleached version of Skin of the Loyal sells for 3 to 3.5 three Exalts. Uh, and this is with an item that you've fed in that, that only cost you 30 Chaos to, to uh, buy the Skin of the Loyal in the first place. However, there is also the potential for a Jackpot hit. This is where you get two synergistic uh, imp Corrupted Implicit modifiers. If you get any two of the mods that add to the level of socketed gems or the 40 to 50 percent increased damage, you have an absolute monster of an item on your hands. Uh, this may well be worth anywhere in the 50 to 300 exalt range, uh, depending upon the colors of, that are that are on it and how well they synergize with the mods that you've rolled. Uh, also, it depends on how many, well, on how popular glass cannon builds are in that league. Because, let's face it, as much as Skin of the Loyal is a powerful unique item, it's not a very good defensive one. Uh, if the if the the meta of that league favours all out offence, uh, as has been the case in several leagues, you may very well be able to get much more than a Mirror of Calandra for for a Skin of the Loyal with two perfect corruptions that both synergize with the actual, um, with the colors of the sockets on it. As a side note, I have a divination card in the works for a, for a two implicit corrupted skin of the loyal. Uh, this would be something that may well be out in expansion 3.8. Uh, if it is not in 3.8, I kind of think it'll be in 3.9. It feels like it's pretty close to complete and it's still in discussion with Grinding Gear Games at the moment. 
it it had flavor text that was going to be uh, linked to Zilkapa, the architect of the breach. Uh, although for space reasons, the attribution has been removed. So that means that it may or may not end up dropping from Zilkapa. But I just thought I'd give you a bit of a heads up that that is the most likely place for it. In any case, that is Skin of the Loyal. Let's move on to Sedema's Touch. Sedema's Touch is an interesting item in that it is very, 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 very common. You have probably sold 10 of these to a vendor this league if you play any, even as much as I do, much less as much as the people that are level 100 already do. You'll notice that it has one very important role on it. 5-10% to increased quantity of items found. Increased item quantity is brokenly overpowered as a mod, and it is the best in slot gloves for any character that wants to specialize in magic finding. There is no bias on this roll from 5 to 10%. Anything from 5 to 10% is equally likely to roll. So that means that one in six Sedema's touches that you pick up will be 10%. You only want to double corrupt ones that are 10% quantity. Uh, the double corruption altar is, has a fairly high opportunity cost in using it. You don't want to use it on second best items. Uh, partly because if you were to double corrupt a Sedema's Touch that had 9% item quantity and then get extraordinary, extraordinary, extraordinary uh, Vile Implicits on it, you're going to end up being very sad because a magic find build is going to take a 10% increased item quantity one uh, as a pref uh, in preference to yours. So they're not going to pay a large premium for your 9% version. You want to only consider purchasing a version of this that is 10%. You also always want to use item level 60 plus. Uh, and the reason for that is that it increases the pool of potentially good corruptions that are available. So if you look up the corruptions that are available on gloves, and we can see here there's a whole bunch of gem level 1s that are level 20. Gem level 1s are great on 6 link items, they are not so impressive on gloves. We then have increased max life, yeah that's nice, increased max energy shield is nice, socketed gems is meh, increased cast speed is very nice. Then we have the big ones. There are five different curses that can be inflicted on every single hit. Despair, Alloy Weakness, Enfeeble, Temp Chains, and Vulnerability. And they come in at level 30. Then at level 60, we get three new very, very, very juicy corruptions as well. Attacks have 0.5 to 0.8% crit chance. Spells have the same amount of crit chance and plus one to max frenzy charges. All of these level 60 corruptions are extraordinarily good. All of these level 30 corruptions are extraordinarily good. Of the level 1 and level 20 ones, all the plus 2 gem ones are pretty mediocre. Uh, you know, yeah, you'll take them if they're available, but they're not great. And then you have the level 1 ones, of which you've got life and energy shield and cast speed are pretty good. Plus 1 to socketed gems fits into the same category as the level 20 ones. What you want to do is dilute the pool so that there is less of the level 20 options available. You could use a level 1 to 19 version, um, in which case you've got life, energy shield, cast speed and socketed gems as options that could roll up. However, none of these are nearly as powerful as getting a, is getting a curse on hit. So with all of this in mind, you want to use an item level 60 or higher Sedema's Touch so that you've got everything available, uh, with the backup being a 31 to 60, and the secondary backup being a level 1 to, to 19. You do not ever want to double corrupt an item level 20 through, 30, uh, 20 through 29 Sedema's Touch because you've got all of these basically shitting up the pool. Now, keep in mind that Sedema's are best in, find for mag uh, best in slot for magic find characters, and magic find characters are rich, and their builds are varied, so they can use a lot of these different options. You've had a hit with the Sedema's Touch if you get any roll that is not a plus to socketed gem levels, but mostly if you get a curse. You can expect to get half an exalt to a full exalt for one good mod that is not a curse, 
you can expect to get one exalt for a curse that has, you know, some rubbish other mod. So, say for instance, if you would get Curse with Despair on hit and also get plus two to socketed Trap or Mind Gems. Uh, and you can expect to get four exalts for a single curse and a non-synergistic but good mod. So, for instance, if you were to get uh, Curse with Alley Weakness on hit and increase maximum life. The jackpot hits that you can get are when you get a curse and a synergistic crit mod. So, for instance, if you were to get uh, Curse of Vulnerability on hit and attacks have critical strike chance, then you should expect to sell this for dozens of Exalted Orbs. Uh, do not let go of something as rare and precious as that cheaply. And ultimately, with the Corruption Altar, the big hits are going to be a big portion of the value that you end up with. So you're not often going to hit that. It might only be one in every 30, one in every 40 uh, double corruption uses. But when you get it, you're going to get so much that it's going to make up for all of the, all of the misses. And the next option to consider is any of the threshold jewels. So these are the jewels that modify a particular skill. Uh, jewels have... Uh, these threshold jewels have... They're basically best in slot for a whole range of characters. These are things like the Rolling Flames Fireball Jewel. That every character that uses Fireball wants to use Rolling Flames. And every character that uses uh, Molten Strike wants to use Wildfire. What you want to do, because the Threshold Jewels aren't very expensive and are very common in a trade-enabled league, what you want to do is find one that is divine perfect. So if we bring up PoE Wildfire, and we'll bring up the actual uh, jewel for Molten Strike, you'll notice here that it's got the 10 to 15% increase fire damage. You're not going to use a Corruption Altar on a 10% one. You're not even going to use one on a 14% one. You're going to trade with other players until you've got a 15% increase fire damage version of this jewel, and then you can go and double corrupt away. There is a very solid chance that you will improve the item, and if you do improve the item, uh, although you're not massively improving it, uh, hitting Corrupted Blood Cannot Be Inflicted on you will considerably increase its value, as will hitting 1% Reduced Mana Reserved. The other mods are all beneficial, and will all increase the value as well. All of this in mind, uh, the reason that you consider doing Divine Perfect Threshold Jewels is that rich players pay large sums of currency for small upgrades, and these are cheap uniques that they are definitely going to be using if they're playing these skills. A jackpot here is Corrupted Blood Immunity and one mod that synergizes with the skills. So for instance, uh, if we're talking about Molten Strike, 5% uh, increased damage and immunity to Corrupted Blood would be a jackpot. A hit is just two implicits that are relevant to the skill, so not something like uh, minions deal 4 to 5% increased damage on, or you cannot be maimed. That don't do very much, unless of course you're playing a minion build. The next option that I want to consider, and now we're starting to get into more unique, uh, into more unusual items, is the Snake Pit Sapphire Ring. This drops from the Guardian of the Hydra. And we're not just going to take any old crappy version of this item. This is an item that has a large range of mo uh, on its mods. It has a spell damage roll that varies from 20 to 40%, and an increased cast speed roll that varies from 5 to 10%. We're only going to corrupt the best ones because a lot of people are killing the Hydra at this point in the league. And so here is a search. This is the Path of Exile Trade aggregation website. And this will list every item that players have listed for trade that is, is the Snake Pit Sapphire Ring, that has at least 10%, which is a perfect roll, cast speed, and at least 35% increased spell damage. So these range from 5 to 10 and 20 to 40, respectively. And if we hit search, we'll see what's available. You'll notice here that if I then search listing the items from most spell damage to least. Uh, we have here, this player is selling a Divine Perfect Snake Pit for 40 Chaos Orbs. This person is selling a Corrupted one with, with uh, Grants Level 21 Pride. You can't, you can't use this in, in the Corruption Altar because it's already Corrupted. Uh, they're asking 65 Chaos for that. This person is selling a Divine Perfect one for 70. 
Uh, this player is selling one for an exalt. This player is asking 1.6 exalts. And then we're going down to 39%, so we're one off Divine Perfect. They're asking 40 Chaos. This player doesn't know what they want. Uh, this player is asking 38 Chaos for 30%, 59 Chaos for 38%, and so on down. As is always the case, some of these may be bad faith listings, and I'm not actually sure whether the, you know, even whether the Divine Perfect ones would sell for, for an Exalt, let alone 70 Chaos. But you can get pretty close. As you can see, there's a, enough Snake Pits in the economy that you can get fairly close. This is a niche item, but for the builds that it is good on, oh my god, it is amazing. And this is something that if you were to double corrupt and hit hard, uh, you have a very good item for some super niche builds. Snake Pit is not very expensive. As I say, even a even one that is close to Divine Perfect in a mature league is only a few dozen Chaos Orbs. Next up, we, we're going to start getting more and more expensive at the moment. Uh, the next item that I want to talk about is in the unique accessories section. And here we're looking at a couple of amulets. Presence of Chaeula, which is uh, surprisingly cheap in the Legion League. Presence of Jayola is one of the best items ever built for hybrid and for low life characters and for hybrid energy shield life characters. 60% chaos resistance and a massive boost to energy shield at the expense of life, along with immunity to stun, which is one of the big weaknesses of low life characters. There's a very powerful item, and being an Onyx Amulet, it has a marginally useful but not overly good implicit. Onyx Amulets, however, or Amulets in general, have very strong Vial Implicits available, and so these are pretty good at 59 Chaos Orbs. You'll also notice that there's nothing that is divinable on these. Uh, it's always 30% Rarity, 60% Chaos Resist, and 20% Conversion. This ends up being a pretty solid budget choice. If you want more powerful though, you can always pick one of the Impresence Amulets. With these, you're going to want to pick one that is well divined, and the more expensive the base type is. So you'll see here that in the uh, Legion League right now, the Chaos Impresence is much more expensive than the Physical or the Fire or the Cold or the Lightning versions. Uh, that also means that you will have a higher maximum reward if you get lucky with it. Uh, but all of these are pretty solid choices. Again, amulets have extraordinarily good corruptions, and these, yeah, these will end up as as very very hot demand items if you get lucky. The next option is to take a an item level one hundred six linked rare sacrificial garb that is a rare item. So if we look up the divination cards that are available, there is one called the Sacrifice. This is a divination card set that drops from Architects in the present day Temple of Atsuatl. And a set of four cards, they're pretty rare cards. I, I feel they're about a 1% drop rate from the Architects, uh, at least that's from personal experience. Uh, they drop a six link sacrificial garb with item level 100. There's a couple of possibilities you can get with this. Um, firstly, you could get a Shadow Stitch. Shadow Stitch is the unique item that only comes from the from Val. Oh, sorry, from uh, using the Temple Corruption Altar on a sacrificial garb. If you hit hard, if you get a Shadow Stitch with good colors and synergistic implicits, you have made absolute bank. But the other thing is that you can do a little bit of preparation before you stick it in the altar. You can craft your sacrificial garb with a few fossils. You don't want to spend a lot on this, but you want to just throw a few fossils on it, trying to make an item that is pretty good before you then go and feed it to the altar. So throw a few um, fossils on it. Ultimately, you want a five mod rare that you can then put a sixth mod on from the crafting bench and have something that is already pretty solid. Go to the corruption altar, corrupt it, and then you'll wind up with a six mod item, well, at least assuming that it doesn't brick, you'll wind up with a six mod item that potentially can have two implicits, two vile implicits, 
or failing that will have I uh, potentially have six white sockets. Both of these are pretty good outcomes and Shadow Stitch is also a very good outcome. You don't want to spend a lot on it because when the item turns into Shadow Stitch you'll feel pretty bad. But this, the Sacrifice Divination card is pretty cheap, you know. Six, um, six Chaos Orbs at the moment, so 24 for a set. That's pretty cheap. And your jackpot hit is getting two, two good implicits on a solid rare or Shadow Stitch with good colours and synergistic implicits. A hit is just a Shadow Stitch with good colours and one useful implicit. Or two mediocre implicits on an otherwise solid rare. The next option that I want to talk about is Ventor's Gamble with 10% increased item quantity and otherwise serviceable but not great stats. Ventor's Gamble is one of the more interesting uniques in the game. I don't believe a single Divine Perfect one exists and as you can see there is a huge, huge, huge range of possible rolls on these. So there are 61 possible life rolls, anything from plus 0 to plus 60. There are 21 item quantity rolls, anything from minus 10 to plus 10%. There are 81 rarity rolls possible, anything from minus 40 to plus 40. Uh, there are 76 fire resistance rolls, anything from minus 25 to plus 50. There are 25, uh, sorry, 76 cold resistance rolls and 76 lightning resistance rolls. In short, Divine Perfect 1 doesn't exist. What you want though is a pretty solid Venter's Gamble that has 10% increased item quantity and that has okay stats in the rest of it. So that's the life, the fire, cold and lightning resist. Rarity is a very unimportant stat, so you can largely ignore that. The sort of Venter's Gamble that typically sells for about two Exalted Orbs, maybe even three. And this is the first of the expensive items that I'm going to suggest feeding to the Corruption Altar. Now, Venter's Gamble has no meaningful implicit mod on it. 6 to 15% increased rarity of items found, who cares? Uh, what you can do is then throw that on the Corruption Altar and potentially get any two of the Ring Corruption mods. The Ring Corruption mods aren't all that hot either. You have cast speed, you have rarity, you have quantity, which quantity of course is amazing. Um, you have various aura increased effects, you have st some stat stacking mods, you have elemental resistances, attack speed, uh, cold damage to spells and attacks, lots of rolls, fire damage to spells and attacks, lightning damage to spells and attacks, various um, Oh, Grant's, Grant's Anger. Bleeding cannot be inflicted on you is an amazing role, but is extraordinarily rare. Immunity to various other statuses. Um, various, yeah, various um, curse skills as level 23 or so. So you've got, auras, uh, you've got curses at 23, auras at level 21. Uh, increased global physical is nice. Mana gain for each enemy hit by your attacks is nice. And then there's one more... Uh, one more aura skill that is granted to you. In short, it's a pretty mixed bag, but generally speaking, these are better than the rarity implicit that is available by default on a gold ring. And so for that reason, uh, Ventor's Gamble that is good but not ex but not godly, not, a, not an extraordinary one, is a pretty solid choice. However, you want to use an item level 84 or higher Ventor's Gamble. And the reason for that is that in the very, 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 very unlikely chance that you hit the miracle corrupt of three to five percent increased item quantity found, uh, you are going to be rich if you hit a ten if you hit that on a ten percent increased item quantity one. If you have a Venter's Gamble that rolls a five percent increased item quantity, uh, you will be able to sell that for hundreds. Hundreds of exalted orbs, especially if you're in standard league, uh, it's going to be of extraordinary value because remember, this is going to be a monstrously big upgrade to anyone that is a magic find character, and magic find players are rich. Next up, in in the expensive side of things, we have Frostferno with an elemental themed enchant. So, Frostferno is a helm that is granted, uh, that is the fated upgrade of the Heat Shiver helmet. Uh, it has plus two to cold spell, uh, socketed cold gems, and plus two to socketed fire gems. And being a helmet, it has the potential to roll plus 
to to various other gems as well. All is said, it is potential to give an extraordinary boost to the gem level of either Discharge or Elemental Hit. If you can get a Frostferno that has a, an enchant that is themed in any way around either Discharge or Elemental Hit. Some examples of good enchants for this are Blood Rage uh, grants additional attack speed, uh, Discharge has a chance not to consume charges, Elemental Hit has increased attack speed or increased damage, any of these sorts of things. Uh, if you can get a good double corrupt on a Frostferno with those enchants, you are ridiculously, ridiculously, ridiculously rich. You can buy Heat Shivers or Frostfernos and enchant them, or you can use enchant fossils on uh, leather hoods, with, and particularly shaped leather hoods are good here as well. And if you do hit an extraordinarily good enchant, then scour chance until you get Heat Shiver. It doesn't need to be a best in slot enchant for elemental hit, just one that's good. And you can then end up with an enormous amount of currency if you hit really hard. And the next option I want to suggest is a well-divined law weave. As we bring up the list of the various um, various things that you can get as implicit on a chest armor, you'll notice that there are a few of them that aren't particularly good on law weave. Plus one to all maximum resistances. Not doesn't actually do anything if you have law weave setting your maximum resistances. Or Minus 4, 4 to 6 percent reduced chaos damage or cold damage or fire damage or lightning damage taken. Law Weave, however, is one of those interesting items in that it is very easy to control the item level of the Law Weave that you get out. What you want to do when you're acquiring your Law Weave, uh, and you'll acquire your Law Weave by vendoring a full inventory, so that is a full 60 unique rings at once. What you want to do is make sure that the minimum item level of the rings that you that you feed to the vendor is in the range of 1 to 44. And generally speaking, you will want it to be in the 20 to 44 range. So that means that at least one of your rings is in the range 20 to 44 and nothing else is lower than 20. As long as, and that should be pretty easy to do. Chances are, before you hit level 44, you probably found a unique ring while you were leveling. So just use that. Vendor all, vendor all 60 of them, and you'll have a, a Law Weave that has item level between 20 and 44. Given that it is a Law Weave, it always has six sockets. And you want to then divine it until it has solid, not necessarily extraordinary, but at least solid stats. And then you will want to get it 28 quality via Haku in uh, via Haku in research. Uh, is it Haku? It's it's one of them. Uh, yeah, I believe it's Haku. Haku in research will will upgrade it to 28% quality. A law weave has been nerfed in the last expansions, but it is still a very good item. Now you will want to six link it if and only if you get a massive hit. The only exception to this is if using orbs drops so cheap that a Val Orb trading, that if you can easily trade your Val Orbs for five or more Fusing Orbs. In that case, uh, then you will want to six link the item beforehand. Otherwise, uh, just stick it on the Corruption Altar when it is not six linked, and you want to then, if you hit the Miracle hit, if you hit the Absolute Jackpot, then at that point, and only in that point, you will then go and feed 1500 Val Orbs, as well as 1500 Fusing Orbs, to Verici in order to upgrade your Law Weave into a 6 link. The next, the next body armor that I suggest considering is Calm's Heart. Uh, with Calm's Heart, you either want to use an item level 80 plus, or an item level 1 to 19 Calm's Heart. The reason for this is that the plus 1 to all maximum resist is the very best possible corrupt you can get on a Calm's Heart. However, plenty of the other corruptions are good, but the good ones are all item are all locked to item level one, and because Calm's Heart has no sockets, all of the level twenty corruptions, except for the uh, you have, you take fifty percent reduced extra crit damage from crits, all of those are trashed here, so you don't want any of those. And so for that reason, what you'll need to do is level a new character to Act 4, where you get access to Tasuni, or 
in an established league, uh, just level them far enough to get into your hideout, which is only level two. And then go to Tasuni or to Navali in your hideout and turn in a set of the divination card, the King's Heart, which grants an uncorrupted Count's Heart. Quality it up to 28 and the item level of the King, of the King's Heart sourced Count's Heart will be equal to the character level that you turned it in on. Because if you turn it in on a level 1 to 19 character, uh, all of these level 20 Corrupted Implicits will no longer be in the pool. The next option to consider is Solstice Vigil. Solstice Vigil is one of the best unique amulets in the game, and amulets have excellent corruptions. Uh, there's not really that much more to say about this one than to say that it is excellent, 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 if you get lucky and you hit a good corruption a good corruption on it. Being an onyx amulet, it doesn't have great implicits on it. I mean they're not terrible. Uh, and this item is something that you can, you know, pick up a well divined one and then feed it to Elva's Corruption Altar. Now we're starting to get really expensive. The next option is to get a four link 30 quality set of excellent rare gloves. Gloves have even better corruptions than amulets do. Glyphic fossils make extraordinary gloves. Well, well, I mean, most of the time they don't, but they can. And elder uh, elder bases work better than shaper ones usually. Um, rare gloves are now better than two socket tomb fists. This was not the case a couple of leagues ago, but tomb fists have been nerfed. They were they were overpowered to the extent they practically invalidated the existence of rare gloves. But tomb fists have had a couple of nerfs since then. Firstly. They lost their attack speed, and then secondly, they lost the very uh, the um, some of the higher powered abyssal jewel mods. So for that reason, rare gloves are better than tomb fists for attack builds, and for caster builds, of course, you you want completely different gloves again. Four link rare gloves can be extraordinarily good, and you can get them. I be I believe you can generally craft rare gloves cheaper than you can craft most other slots. You're starting to look pretty expensive but you can get some absolutely absolutely insane gloves and feed them into the corruption altar. Of course your jackpot here is a six mod rare that has extraordinary uh, implicits on it and if you get something like that you're looking at hundreds and hundreds of exalts to the right buyer. The next item is something that is again a crafted rare item, and we're talking about bloodstained fossils here. Bloodstained fossils have the confusing text, has a Val modifier. What this means is that when you use these on a two-handed weapon, you will get a unique mod that is Val skills ha cause 40%, oh, sorry, for Val skills cost 40% less souls. This is extremely powerful, and it is so good for a lot of builds that, uh, particularly for spellcasters that use a Val spell skill, so something like Val Spark, Val Fireball, Val Ice Nova. This is such a powerful mod that it can do absolutely insane things. Uh, now, if you were to corrupt an item with that, you have a very slim chance of hitting Socketed skills are supported by level 10 onslaught. If you can get a six linked two handed weapon, and this is basically, although it seems strange, this is pretty much all two handed weapons that are not, uh, that are not staves. You know how you always think of the caster as using a staff? Uh, here we're talking about axes, we're talking about swords, we're talking about all the melee weapons. So, yes, a caster that is carrying a big Fuck off Axe of Death is a bit weird, but that's part of Path of Exile's charm. Um, it's all about hitting. Socketed Gems are supported by level 10 Onslaught. If you can get that on a Bloodstained rolled uh, six link caster weapon, you have something truly extraordinary there. You can also consider using one-handers. You won't get the ability to socket your uh, six link caster, uh, your six link Vile skill with Onslaught here, but there are lots of good mods as well that are available on one-handers. So that's another option to consider. Again, two one-handers that are 
bloodstained fossil crafted. Now we're starting to get to very expensive options. And the next option is Six Link, Void Forge, or Star Forge. So as we look at the unique weapons, you'll notice that Star Forge is currently the most expensive unique weapon in the game as of um, as of the third week of the Legion expansion. That's because it is very good in conjunction with a lot of the recently buffed skills, and particularly with the Pride Aura that was recently added. Uh, but also. Pride Aura has made Brutality support really good. There's so much going for Starforge at the moment. A six-link Starforge that rolls any Val Implicit that is not uh, Resolute Technique is looking amazing. Voidforge is similar, and Voidforge is a lot cheaper. Uh, both of these are extraordinarily powerful items, and if you can hit one support, you are rich. If you hit two, you are swimming in Mirrors of Calandra. And there is just not much crap in the pool. Uh, if we look up the list of Val Implicits for two-handed swords, it's surprisingly good. We have increased area of effect. That is amazing on in this current Cyclone meta. Increased attack speed. Have we said, this is amazing. Socketed Gems is supported by level 10 Fortify. Uh, that is extraordinary, especially with the buffs to Fortify recently. Increased physical damage, 10 to 15%. Yeah, meh, not, not very great, but you'll take it. It's a bonus. It's, it's not amazing. 16 to 20% increased physical damage. Still not so great, actually. Flat physical is solid. Uh, it's not extraordinary, but it's solid. Socket of Gems supported by Onslaught is incredible. Socket of Gems supported by additional accuracy is solid. And Resolute Technique, yeah, okay. That's, um, that is the single turd in the gene pool today. Now we get to the last two options. Oh, sorry, the last three options. Rigwald's Quills. This is where we're starting to get to. You can only afford to do this if you're already pretty rich. Uh, Rigwald's Quills, which is listed as an armor for some reason, um, is one of the most powerful unique items in the game, and it's only realistically available at the moment through a divination card that drops mostly in the lair. If you see someone running the lair map, the reason they're running it is because Rigwald's Quills drops there. Uh, it has a couple of unimportant mods, but then it has this extraordinary final mod, Projectiles Fork. This is incredible in a clear speed meta. Absolutely extraordinary. The item is rare, it's powerful, and being a quiver, it actually has access to very strong corrupted implicits. Most of the corrupted implicits aren't so great, but there are a number of truly extraordinary ones. So, bow attacks fire an additional arrow. This is unbelievably powerful. Skills chain plus one times. This is the rarest of the corruptions, and it is, if you think that bow attacks firing an additional arrow is unbelievably powerful, skills chaining an additional time is even better. On top of that, there's a number of other mods that are pretty solid. Uh, gain physical as extra as extra of an element. Uh, there's various, um, you know, high, high amounts of additional elemental damage. And then there's these leech mods, all of which, these leech mods are useful to some players. Uh, you'll find that there will be a minority of players that care about getting Cold Leech, a minority get, care about getting Fire Leech, and so on. Rigwell's Quills is an expensive unique, but there is a lot of potential for it to become extraordinary with two implicit corruptions on it. And is, as well as that, if you have a look, the, the global accuracy rating is a solid implicit, but it is not extraordinary. And so there's lots of opportunities to make it much better than it is at the moment. So for that reason, Rigwald's Quills is on my short list of things to consider. Now we get to the two truly expensive ones. Firstly, Headhunter. Valing a Headhunter is not about profit. It's about showing, it's about showing off. It's about proving that you can. Now, the old meme of Val or No Balls is old. Vals only have a 20, Val orbs only have a 25% chance of ruining your day. Elva has a 50% chance. So yeah, corrupting a headhunter in the altar is an is a way of demonstrating to the world 
that you do not care, that you will throw away fortunes far greater than, than many other players will ever uh, encounter in their lives. Make sure that if you do this, you use an item level 84 plus, uh, but if you're able to acquire a headhunter, you would already know why that is the case, uh, so there's no real point going into that. You would also know that whilst item level 84 plus headhunters are pretty rare to, acquire, uh, to acquire in Legion, you will know how to get them. Last up, and most extreme, is a six-linked uber shaper or elder armor that isn't an astral plate. Now face it, people only want to mirror astral plates, and that's because they have basically a free extra mod. Their implicit being plus uh, being plus 12% to all elemental resistances is essentially, you need to get your resist somewhere, and getting them on an astral plate is essentially free. So there's no synergy with using the Elvis Corruption Altar on a on an astral plate because you will end up throwing away that implicit that is already powerful. You'd be better off uh, using it on a glorious plate or something like that because you lose the amazing implicit anyway. For melee characters, get something that has support uh, that has socketed gems and supported by level one maim, uh, melee critical chance, and good other mods. For casters, get something with spell crit percent. Arcane uh, socket of gems are supported by Arcane Surge and plus to active skills on an otherwise good item. This is how some of the very best items in the, that are possible in the game are made. And realistically, there's no one rich enough to actually generate these in, in the real world. In any case, that's a bit of a list of all the various things I can think of that are optimal for using the Val, oh sorry, for using Elva's Double Corruption Altar on. I'm sure that there's a few things I've missed. I'm sure that there's some great items that you can think of that I haven't. Uh, if you've got those, leave comments below. Otherwise, uh, I hope you have a good one. I hope you're enjoying Legion more than I've been. Um, I had a lot of tech issues early in the league and now I sort of feel a long way behind and I'm probably going to take a bit of a break until 3.8. Uh, I'll still play enough to get to get at least 24, maybe 36 challenges, um, but I'm just not feeling this league. But in any case, I hope you're enjoying Legion more than I have been. And if you've got any questions, fire away below. Otherwise, have a good one.